Welcome to Drawing Conclusions. Today we're reviewing Maze Runner, The Death Cure, the third installment in the trilogy based on the YA dystopian book series by James Dashner. This film follows the attempts of Thomas to save his friends and other immunes from being used as lab rats by the World Catastrophe Kill Zone Department, or Mouthful, I mean, uh, or Wicked, <laughs> as they search for a cure for the virus known as the Flare. The flare has left the world in panic and ruin as it turns its victims crazy and ultra-violent before their minds and bodies finally deteriorate completely. Thomas and his compatriots, sickened by Wicked's willingness to sacrifice hundreds of young people in their search for a cure, seek to destroy the organization and take as many immunes as possible to a safe haven where they can start their own society as they wait out the virus's destruction of the rest of humanity. And so just so you know, for the purposes of this review, Josh hasn't read the book series that these films are based on, but I have. I've read the original trilogy, plus I've read the two prequels. It's been a while since I've read the books, but I have read the books. Okay. Uh, to get started, I thought the acting was good. Nothing hammy or over the top, but nothing stands out in a bad way, so that's good. Right. I think the performances for me are just serviceable. Like, there's not anything that's really tremendous. Um, I'm not sure that the material gives them much um, to to do to be tremendous, but I thought that there, there were a couple of people for me who stood out in a good way. One of them was Thomas Brody Sangster. Um, I also think he has the meatiest role though as Newt, especially in this movie, um, right. the stuff that Newt goes through. But I also really like Will Poulter as Galley, um, not just in this movie, but in the first movie of the series too, and it's actually interesting to see the differences in his character and how he's changed. At two and a half hours, uh, the pacing was pretty good for a long show, and it didn't feel over long to me, and I was really into it. I mostly agree. There were a couple of times when I could truly feel how long the movie was, <laughs> and at the end I felt like they took a little long um, to get to the resolution, but f for the most part, the pacing was good. Yeah. I, I, I like the look of the movie, uh, and all three of the movies in general. And you really see the destruction on a much bigger scale, and it looked real to me. Uh, I could buy that this really happened. Uh, the action set pieces were handled well. Uh, they weren't overly long or drawn out, or even gratuitous, which I really appreciate. Uh, the action didn't distract from the story, but instead added to it. So, really served its purpose. And they managed to sustain the tension throughout the film, and you felt like the characters were really in danger, which action movies sometimes really have a hard time bringing off, like the characters look like they're just going through the motions. This one didn't feel like that to me. Yeah, and despite the fact that the movie did feel a little too long to me, I did find myself on the edge of my seat a lot. <laughs> yes. um, the cranks um, are just a little too scary for me. That's consistent with the books, though. You know, it's always, I mean, the cranks are scary in the books, but it's always scarier to see something on screen than Visuals. in your imagination, at least for me. Um, one thing they do in the books that I wish would have been explored more throughout the entire movie trilogy is that they show you the stages of the virus as people first get sick with it and what happens to them slowly over time as they go crazy. Um, I felt like there were some missed opportunities in this film to show the differences between cranks at different stages, stages of the disease. And um, the previous film in the series as well, they had some missed opportunities there. The movie, uh, I think, had a good resolution and was a decent end to this trilogy. There were certain aspects of the story I think they could have emphasized more. I felt like they could have done more to explain the moral dilemma at the heart of the story, you know, explaining the differences between the differences between what Wicked and the two opposing groups were trying to accomplish. I feel like some of the action could have been cut or even shortened in order to give more time to the story and the development of some of the characters. You know, it's funny because I agree with that in retrospect, but at the time when I was watching it, I realized now that I was filling in the gaps with what I knew from the books. Yeah, I didn't have that luxury. Yeah, so some, <laughs> you know, sometimes when you've read the books, you go and you watch a movie mm -hmm. that the book's based on, and it, it's so disappointing because of what you know they leave out and things like that. But on the other hand, it does give you some advantages over those who haven't seen it. If there are things that they didn't handle well in the movie, if characters haven't been developed as much as they should have, or certain plot points and stuff, because you understand more about what's going on because you know the source material. So for me, that was an advantage mm -hmm. watching this film. Um, as far as adaptations of, of book to screen go, this is definitely not the worst that I've ever seen. Not even close. Um, I mean, you no. know, Percy Jackson... That was unwatchable. ...probably <laughs> takes the cake for me as the worst adaptation. It just, it was heartbreaking to me because I love that series so much. 
And um, it's not as bad as like the Divergent series, although no. the Divergent series, the source material is not as good as the source material here. So, um, but this series also is not as good as like say the Hunger Game movies, which were really excellent. So while I enjoyed this film and the other movies in this series, I still felt like the source material deserved better than what we got. The Maze Runner books are, to me, some of the best in the young adult dystopian genre. Um, so overall for me, this movie was entertaining, but it wasn't great. If you've seen the other two movies, it's definitely worth seeing. And if you're into this kind of dystopian fiction or action movies that have a brain and are actually about something, and you haven't seen the first two films, to go ahead and take a look at those and, and watch this one too. But I don't necessarily think that you need to see it in the theater. You can wait to watch this one at home. Um, it's not a bad film, but for me it was just okay. Hmm. Well, I thought it was good, but not great. Um, I give it three and a half mice scurrying in the maze. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thanks for watching our review of Maze Runner The Death Cure. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you. <laughs>